Howdy doody. So today I'm together with my friend Trevor. Good morning, Trevor. And uh, Trevor is also known as Teacher T. Teacher T. Yes. Teacher T in Thailand. Yes. Uh, he has a YouTube channel also. Um, and as you would guess from the name of his channel, Trevor is a teacher. And he actually teaches uh, around the corner from me here, about two or three minutes uh, ride on my motorbike to his, exactly. what do you call that, a bilingual school, I think. Is that it is a it? bilingual school, yes. Yeah. Half the lessons are in Thai, half the lessons are in English. That's right, yeah. But my kids are that clever, they can speak four languages. <laughs> Which is how many more than you then? Yeah. About three, three more than you? <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, they can speak uh, Chinese, they can speak Thai, they can speak English, and then they can speak their Aka Hill Tribe oh, language as well. Uh, have you got a lot of Aka children in your class? Not a lot, not a lot, but uh, I think I've got three girls from the mountains that are very smart, very clever, yeah. and uh, very bright kids, and they work hard, they really work hard. Well, I don't want to give too much away. It may not work out, but I've been nagging Trevor to let me maybe try and make a, a day in the life of Acker Schoolgirls mm -hmm. video, which I think would be very interesting for a lot of people watching my channel. Mm -hmm. Because as Trevor has told me, and as I say, it may be a waste of time telling me this now if I don't get to do this video, but apparently they do. They have a very long work, uh, school day. They have a very long school day, yeah. Because so, they live up in the, in the village in so the mountains. They're up yeah. at five in the morning. Yeah. And breakfast and change and thing. And hour in the bus to get to school. Yeah. They're always at school at 7.30 before everyone else. Yeah. And then school starts at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then they do after school class at school for an hour. Mm. Then they get on the bus an hour home. And then when they get home, they've got three hours of Chinese lessons. When That's they get incredible. Home. Yeah. yeah. It's such a long day for them. So I thought that would be a wonderful little, it may not be a very long video, but I think just to illustrate how some up in this part of Thailand, how some uh, some people live, local people. I mean, they come from the Aka community who originally, I think probably 100, 200, 300 years ago, came down from southern China or some part of China originally. But they're Thais uh, from an ethnic uh, minority. And they live in the, they live in the mountains near here. Yeah? And they have different, diff some different traditions, maybe some differences in their religion, in their clothes they wear, that's how they identify themselves. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going too fast ahead of the, on this thing because it may, may never happen, but I think that's very interesting, uh, Trevor. You work in a, in a local school. It's not a, it, it's not a regular state school, that's why they have half the curriculum, I think. It's a private school, so there's some very uh, affluent yeah, kids that go to the school. Yeah, um, and I think the government then has a deal with the school that okay, you, we we need to send some people from a poor background to your school. Yes. To, to so they get these particular girls you mentioned. You said were pretty well the best in the class, I believe. Yeah. Um, they um, they are probably on some sort of scholarship. Then they may not have very wealthy parents or family. I I think. Their parents have coffee farms. Okay, okay. And coffee businesses and coffee shops. So maybe okay. maybe they're a little bit well yeah, off. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. definitely not all the children. There must be at least 12 of them at our school mm -hmm. who will come on the bus together in the morning. Mm. And uh, they're, they're definitely subsidized somehow, I think. Okay, well, fair enough. Okay. Anyway, that's another subject. I didn't really want to go so deep into the teaching thing, because especially if it ever happens with my idea of of doing a day in the life of these uh, school children. But anyway, so you, and as it says in the title of this video, you're not only a teacher, uh, relatively late in life, if I may say so, mm -hmm. yes, but you're also a trucker, as the Americans I, say. Or I was a, a trucker. TV. Oh, you still got your license, haven't you? No, I've let it slip. You let your license slip. Yeah. Okay, well, it, it, for UK uh, viewers, uh, yours is called an HGV. Heavy goods vehicle mm -hmm. license, isn't it? What you let slip now, you used to have. Mm -hmm. And I think the backstory on that you told me is that you were, for many years, most of your life, I think, working life, you were in the RAF, is that right? Yes, yes. I was okay. a, a regiment gunner in the Royal Air Force. Okay. And my resettlement training was HGV drive. Okay. Which, which I took. When was that, actually? When did you do that retraining to be a trucker, uh, an HGV, a uh, heavy goods vehicle driver? Well, well, driver. actually, maybe that's a lie then, because uh -huh. I did my HGV when I was in 
1920. Maybe you had to refresh it when you left the RA. Yeah, pretty much. I did it when I had a very early age. You had to be 21 in England uh -huh. to, to do an HGB. I did mine at 19. I okay. had an exception, exception mm. because I was military. Yes. So I got mine at a very young age. Yes. And uh, so I've always been driving trucks, always, always, But you always. didn't do that as part of your RAF thing, did you? Were you well, you just had to trucks? take troops from A to B, so okay. everybody had to sit in the back. I had but the most you were a gunner, camera. but so, in fact, you were you also drove quite a bit in the RAF, as well, did you? Just logistics and things, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, interesting. And how long were you in the RAF? Uh, on and off, 14 years. Okay, well, that's quite a long time. And, uh, there's another video of mine, which I think will probably be on uh, YouTube before we show you. Yeah. And uh, a colleague of yours, Corey, is featuring in that one. And he is an Australian, yeah. also a teacher in your school, mm -hmm. same school as you, and also with a military background. Yes. But he is an Australian, so he was in 22, 23 years, yes, I think, in the full term. And he was a medic in the Australian uh, uh, military. Yeah. So you both got, you're both teachers. Which is uh, why we get on so well. Which is why we get on so well. We get the same banter, we're at the same level with banter, so <laughs> that we, yeah. we get each other. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, so you found yourself now, how long have you been teaching? In Thailand now, I think this is gonna be my fourth year. Um, okay. I was an instructor in the Air Force at the end. I was a weapons instructor. Okay, so. because Corey told me the same thing, that he was also teaching in yeah. his job as yeah. a medic in the Australian military. Mm -hmm. So he said it wasn't that new to him in that sense, and maybe it's the same with you. It's not, it's not new to me standing yeah. up in front of people, but the only thing I can do is get them to run up and down and do press-ups and things like that <laughs> when, they're, when they're not listening. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a different um, different aspect. Yeah. But I did my TEFL certificate in England about 10 years ago, teaching mm -hmm. English as a foreign language. Yeah. And uh, I did that, and luckily I had that paper in my, in my holding. Yes. So when COVID hit and there was an outcry for native English speakers and mm. there was no one here, no backpackers, no people taking the gap year, and no. they stayed at home, locked down. Yeah. There was an opportunity for me, this old guy, to be an English teacher. <laughs> and uh, I just thought it was going to be three months, six months, earn a bit of money, get by. Mm -hmm. But then I discovered that I enjoyed it. I deal with the kids. I've got grandchildren in England, so mm. I know how to deal with young kids. You yeah, know? yeah. And uh, so yeah, it's worked out all right. And maybe maybe one more year left, mm. and then hopefully my YouTube channel kicks in. Yeah, <laughs> well, have to work on that. Well, I hope this little episode today, I hope will promote yours in, in some way as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so what were you doing? How come you were in Thailand in the first place when this opportunity arose for you to do some teaching? Right, so this is my my best mate from the regiment. Okay. So when I was in England, uh, he would be calling me up every day, come to Thailand, come to Thailand. For a whole year, he pestered me for a whole year. <laughs> and it was like, Thailand, why on earth would I want to go to Thailand? The last place on my yeah. list where I would like to go. Uh -huh. sometimes, sometimes he would get these girls on the phone, hello, <laughs> come to Thailand. Was he, come was he voting for a barber? Yes, <laughs> I think so, yes, I think so. And then eventually I caved in and uh, yeah. we, we uh, spent a couple of weeks in Bangkok. The first two weeks in Bangkok, I had the time of my life being a single, yeah. fresh, divorced, uh, mid thirties. Um, so it was a couple of years ago, if I'm guessing right. 20 years ago, yeah, 20 <laughs> years ago. And uh, it, it was that uh, much of a life changing thing for me. I actually bought a condo in Bangkok uh -huh. on my first two weeks of being in wow. Bangkok. Yeah. At the time when the pound was so high yeah. and it was just easy to open up a bank account yeah. and, and I just bought a condo there and then mm -hmm. off plan, it wasn't built, it was just a, a gamble. Oh, I see. It cost me 16,000 pounds. Oh, what a huge investment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what would you got in the UK at the time? Maybe <laughs> half a garage or something. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just, it wasn't a no brainer. And yeah. within six months they phoned up and said, the condo's finished, uh -huh. come, and, come and pay for it. I only come and look at it, come, come and see it. I only paid a 10% deposit when okay. I ordered it. And it was beautiful, it was done, and it was a 28-story building, and uh -huh. it was, we had our own swimming pool by the canal, we had okay. our own gymnasium, yeah. it was absolutely perfect, and, and uh, that was that was the life change for me, because yeah. all of a sudden I got this condo in Bangkok, maybe I'll go there and live for a little bit, and it was, it was going to be my hub for travel, I was going to use it to go to 
Cambodia and Australia and Vietnam, mm -hmm. all these major plans that I had. Mm -hmm. But before I started those plans, I thought, well, I'll do Thailand first. Mm -hmm. So I did, I did uh, Wah Hin and Pattaya and mm -hmm. Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. and then eventually Chiang Rai. And by the time I got here, I could speak a little bit of Thai. Okay. I had a lot of Thai teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I met my wife who lives here in Chiang Rai. Okay, so that coming to that very important connection, because later on in this little episode, we're going to be at your place, mm -hmm. you and your wife's place, and which is a very lovely setting with the mountains in the background and the lake in the back garden and all that sort of thing. And uh, so your wife, Pat, who uh, comes originally in a family from, from this part of she's, China. She's a Chiang Rai girl. From Chiang Rai. Yeah. And how long ago was it now that you met her? So it's about. You don't have to say <laughs> about. So when I <laughs> when I first met her, her daughter was eight years old. Okay. My daughter from UK is, was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And those girls are now 26, 27. Okay. So, so that 18, 19 years. 20 years. Yeah, like maybe 20 years right, ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're the maths teacher. Yeah, yeah I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's just all a bit of a blur, but. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and it, we just hit it off straight away and we had a connection with the daughters and everything else and mm, that's uh, great yeah so around about 20 years ago so you obviously you were uh, you, you, you know, started a relationship with her you got married a little bit later than that i guess yeah because uh, i said to her i'm never going to get married ever again <laughs> okay. it's never gonna it's so much hurt so much pain i'm yeah. never gonna go for yeah. that again yeah. and uh and eventually i caved in because <laughs> because when on her first trip to england my daughter saw me single for five years after I got divorced. My parents were really concerned about me being, <laughs> being a, you know, on the shelf. Yeah. And then when they met Pat, they all fell in love with her and okay. said, you know, you, you've got to marry this girl. She's, yeah. And you so told good. me a story, you told me earlier on about how you built a, a little house in the UK, I believe. Yeah. Um, so her first yeah. visit to England, uh, this, this is how I met her really, because yes. I applied for I sold my old cottage that I bought, mm. which is a 400-year-old cottage in England. Yes. It, I took eight years to renovate it, um, sold it, made a, made a big profit from it, mm. and kept half the garden. Mm. So while I was applying for planning permission and getting plans passed, I mm. came to Thailand, did a bit of traveling, mm. and met Pat. Mm. So when I said bye-bye to my holiday romance, she said, I'll... I'll come to England and help you build the house. And I just oh. laughed. I absolutely laughed. I said, oh, yeah, great. You get your visa. I'll pay for your ticket. Thinking that would be it. Yeah. She got her visa. She, she did, did it all herself. It good I've got my visa. It's good as a word. Yeah. And you yeah. told me, which I thought was also a nice aspect of the story. I think at the time you were working as a tracker, as an HTV yeah. driver. And there yeah. was a time when, because the house wasn't finished, where you were sleeping in the little cab. Yeah, yeah. So that was your place of a boat. Again, back in the time when life was simpler, yeah, no rules and regulations. My boss in England would let me take her in the truck, and we would spend five days traveling. Oh, you together as well. Okay, on the on the route. Okay. Yeah, she, she would come with me for five nights at a time in the truck. <laughs> Very small bed, but you know, I said to her, "Stay at home." She goes, "I've come to England to see you. Why on earth would I want to stay at home on my own for five days a week?" Now, I think for me, the perfect end to that little story about in the life in the truck would be if she brought a camping gas stove with her and did wonderful Thai meals no, for we you didn't, whilst we you were didn't doing do that. that. No, we didn't do that. Okay. no time to do that. That's the trouble <laughs> because then all of a sudden you're, you're satellite tracked and, uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, okay. you, you speak to the old truckers of 30 yeah. years ago and every night, there no such thing as night driving. No. They would all be staying at all the pubs, for bed and breakfast every night. Yes. And, and they just had a, a glorious life, the old truck drivers. And yes, it was more interesting. And it was a specialized trade. Yes. Uh, now it's now just, it's all computerized. Now it's just slave work, honestly. You've yeah. pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. I know you've got regulations for driving hours, but yeah. you're still doing 15 hour days. I mean, you may not be driving, but you're sat in a queue waiting to be unloaded, you know? So, so anyway, I miss those days anyway. Uh, I don't. Well, the, the new days, the, 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 the controlled ones where they where the, the, the itinerary is fixed and, and you're and you're what you're monitored, I think, by satellite. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. So it so this is how me and Pat survived. It would be yeah. three months me working in England. Yes. As a truck driver, yeah. Earning enough money that I can come to Thailand for three months and yeah. and live like a king. Yeah. And we did that for many years mm. until COVID struck and I got stuck in England. The day I think at, at three or four days after I landed in England, Boris announced lockdown. Uh-huh. I was stuck there for a year. 
Yes. And luckily, I had the HGV license. Cause I was saying, because you did some trucking then, didn't you? Yeah, I did the whole year, yeah. And that was from purely from a money point of view. That was a, a very it useful was a, time. A brain-saving thing, because yeah, I yeah. could not stay in a room for a year. No, you also got out. Unlike some people who weren't allowed out even, mm -hmm. yeah, with, the, with those famous stories about people taking road trips and so on. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? The uh, Johnson's assistant who got in trouble for taking mm -hmm. taking a road trip to test his eyes. I think that was yeah. the official reason for his road trip. But you and your job—that was your job. You had to get out. Somebody had, had to deliver the food to the yeah. supermarkets. And, and it was out. it was like a a movie, you know, yeah. end of the world movie. Yeah. Because there was no cars on the road. First time I ever seen it like it in my life. But yeah. No cars on the road, yeah. deserted roads, and just trucks. That must have been special as well. And it, yeah. it was scary at first yeah. because everywhere you go deliver, you have to use a touch keypad yeah. to get access to going. Yes. And, and I was thinking, how many dry drivers have touched it? And then I was mm. alcohol in my hands mm. so much that the skin was peeling off my hands. And because we never knew, you know, we, we were told at the time, right, it was it was like a plague. Well, yes, it's yes. going to kill us. Back on it, it does seem like a very yeah. So it, it yeah. was it was scary yeah, times, but and then. People are allowed to go out and exercise once a day, so they'd be holding bar banners on top of the bridges as you're driving underneath these thank you truckers and oh, this kind oh, of oh, stuff, oh, which oh, was oh. kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was really strange times. And then and then when I eventually did come back to Thailand, I was one of the first expats to get back to Thailand mm. because I had a Thai wife. Yes. So and then I had to spend two weeks quarantine in Bangkok, which was just underlined the fact that I couldn't, that I really struggled with that. I really did struggle with that. Mm. And I just couldn't have done a year like that in England. No, I couldn't. No, on my own. No. Yeah. Um, so I do feel sorry for the people that had to go through that on their own. Yes. Terrible, terrible yes. experience. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, I agree. Yes. So, um, so you found yourself up here just around about. So it's obviously after they allowed people in mm -hmm. uh, to Thailand when you got out of the UK after doing your year or so behind the wheel, mm -hmm. taking advantage of that situation when you were there with your license still. And that was just around about so two or three years ago when you came yeah. up. Yeah. And you got, because you had an experience building a house with your wife helping you with that in the UK, but you also yeah. built a new house here in Thailand. Yeah, so uh, five or six years ago, we, we bought three rye of land, which mm -hmm. is about one acre in English terms. Okay. And uh, it was an old rice field, so we paid for hundreds of lorries to come and top it up to get it out of the, the yeah. flood zone. Yeah. And then we've got our new house, which isn't new anymore, it's four years old. Wow, it's, everything's relative. You know? <laughs> I think in the UK where we both come from, there's a lot of houses that are a lot older than four years. <laughs> so, you know, if you get a Thai lady, the first thing they want to do is buy land. The second thing they want to do is build, build a new house. Yeah. This is common yeah. throughout Thailand. Uh, but because we've been together for like 15 yes. years, I was like, yes. actually, it's, it's the time to do it now. It's going to yeah. be my retirement home. And she's found the perfect land. I, I gave her a list of things. It had to be near a canal. It had to have a view of Doi Chang Mountain. Yes. And it, I want rice fields all the way around me. And, and she found it. She found it. And she got it at a good price, too. Well, that's important. So, yeah. yeah, so we got our, our nice little retirement home. And uh, I just need to find a way to be able to retire now. <laughs> The video, so yeah, you've got to you've, you've got to find a way of uh, getting your your retirement uh, set up and finance. Maybe your channel will help you with that. Um, that was that one up, of the reasons know. for starting the channel. Yeah, another reason was I put a video on YouTube six or seven years ago about me fixing my old Honda. Oh yeah, motorbike. Mm -hmm. I just did it to help people. Mm. Uh, this is how you do this. This is how you balance your carburetor and everything else. Mm. Put it on YouTube. I kept getting alerts, but I just, oh, I haven't got time to reply to anybody, yeah. just let it go. So when I did look into it, actually it's my school children, children my school children that got me into it. Because okay. whenever you ask them, what, what would you like to be when you get older? Mm -hmm. well, teacher, I want to be a YouTuber. Uh -huh. so, really? <laughs> What's that? And then it got me looking into it and and, mm. and I kind of saw the line. I was like, yeah. actually there is, there's, Benefit. And when I saw that this old video that I loaded seven years ago has had 37,000 views. Really? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, oh. and it's a real bad, rubbish, yeah. shaky yeah. phone yeah. video. Yeah. And I was like, mm. and uh, anyway, I've, I've 
got into a channel teacher tea Thailand. It was supposed to be me teaching English, but okay. it just started with motorbikes, which is how we met each other. Yeah, because that's the other thing what I wanted to get onto is the bike, the bike connection. We actually met not so much through bikes, but through the Hash House Harriers, yes. because we're both and then slightly I saw, active. And then I saw your bike, and then I exactly that was the thing. There was a bike connection there too, because I turned up at the Hash at the local run a couple of few months ago now in Chiang Rai on my Royal Enfield, and you at the time had the Royal Enfield, you had the uh, Little Meteor, the same yeah, 350. 350 engine as mine. I've got the Classic and you had the Meteor. Now you've upgraded, you've gone up market and got yourself the, the big, the Super Meteor with the 650 motor, which you're and, doing some and you And you kindly helped me with one of my best videos, I best did, performing videos. Didn't I? We did, we did a, uh, yes. we did, uh, Comparison. Classic 350 compared to the Meteor 350. We did. Yes. That video was posted what two months ago. Mm. It's had over 6,000 views. Well, I didn't know about that. I, I unfortunately didn't make a contract with you at the time to <laughs> get <laughs> part of your non-existent but it got, uh, income. Got you interested <laughs> into YouTube, right? Well, it may be. It may be. Actually, you're quite right. I think it probably was uh, possibly one of the factors. The other one is my my big story about this trip that uh, may or may not happen. With me coming from Europe and driving across half the world and getting here on the bike. Mm -hmm. So, but that's, as I say, we'll have to wait and see if that ever happens. But um, yes, it's true. I, I did one little episode with you where we compared your old bike with my uh, classic. And you've had now the new big 650 Super Meteor for about a month or two now, isn't it? A couple Six of months now, yeah. And you actually, I mean, my new classic, when I got mine in May last year, Within a week of buying that new bike, I was on the road going south because of the smoke, so-called smoky season up here, and went down on a 1500 kilometer trip down to the beach uh, just after I bought that bike last year. That was my excuse anyway to go, to go down because of the smoke. I think it was just wanted to go down to the beach. And you did the same sort of thing with your brand new Super Meteor. You went down to Bangkok about two days after buying the bike, didn't you? I I got my 500 kilometer service done yeah. within the first week. Yes. And then drove down to Bangkok, which was a bit of a crazy thing to do. Because you came back up again about two yeah, days later. Yeah, because of school, I did yeah. get there and back. Yeah. And uh, it was all because when I bought the new motorbike, they gave me a ticket to the Bangkok Motor Show. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay. Oh, that, that was, I really wanted to go to the Motor Show, and also yeah. I thought that would make a good YouTube video. Yes. Which it did, and it, it was such a long thing that it was. It's in a three-part video, that one. So. Yes, yes. Well, I'm planning, I know for sure I am going down in about two or three weeks now down to down to the south of Thailand to near the beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, my channel is already up and running, so I will, I will actually bring the little, uh, you know, the little video camera and stuff with me. And I hope to make a little video, uh, an episode, at least one of that trip down south from here. I hope to... Yeah, find some nice roads to go down on, not just the highways. Yeah, to go down to the beach. It's, you want to go off the highways. I, yes, I discovered this on, on my way back. I hated the way down, and I just loved the way back because I went yes. off, off route. But obviously, you don't want to go off route in the night time. It's not going to be daytime. No, I definitely want to avoid. And there's no need because I have the advantage over you of not having to spend five days a week teaching those lovely children of yours every day of the week, every day work, every day of the work week. I've got more time on my hands than you, so I, I don't have to rush down to the beach or rush back up again. So I'm going to make a bit of a trip of it. It's not bad compared to truck yeah. driving. 15, no. 15 hours a day behind behind the wheel. Yes. Uh, you know, it's just, it's the first time in my life I've ever had an eight to five job. Yes. Ever. Yes. Yes. And I get every weekend off. Yes. Um, so, it, to me, it's it's still good that I get all this time off, and then hopefully, uh, end of March and the whole of April, it's hot, smoky season here. We get the school closes for six weeks, and I'll get paid a month's wages. You have a you have a six week break coming up. When did you say that is the end of March? End of March. Okay. Well, I'll be down. I should be down in the middle of my two month stay down on the beach. Um, and you'll have six. What are you planning to do so then? Then we're going to England to visit my family in England. Oh, okay. And I think you said that you've got to get a visa for for your wife. Is that right? Yes. And because my parents in England are now eighty six, bless them. It takes two or three weeks to get a visa. Mm. We've toyed with this idea for a long time that 
we need to get the 10 year visa now mm. because if anything happens in England yes. within the next 10 years and we need to return suddenly, yes. we, we can't wait the two or three weeks for a visa. So we've just applied for a 10 year visa at great expense, 900 pounds. Wow. And no guarantee that we're going to get it. That's over a thousand dollars, isn't that? Mm -hmm. And uh, and you said there's another fee involved, an agency fee or something. So like yeah, that? that that's just the UK government is the nine hundred. Oh, okay. Pounds. Yeah. And then with currency exchange, it's cost me one thousand and fifty pounds. Wow. And then on top of that, then we've got to use a company called VFS, which is subcontracted out. And then that's another five thousand baht, another hundred and twenty pounds. So. It's an expensive thing, but if you manage, as I hope you do, to get yeah. one for, for So Pat's been to England about yeah. seven times. Yes. But every time, they want to take her fingerprints no, and no. eye scan. No, no, no. As if she's ever going to change them. Yeah. yeah. And as if they don't, you'd think they would they have, have it. They take their trouble to have it in their database. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. what's the point of them so doing every it? Every time we have to go through yeah. this process, which is just so annoying, which is yeah. why we decided, let's be done with it and do the 10 years. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully we get it. You know, but we've, oh, we've okay. tried it in the past, we've paid for a five year visa in the past, and all we got was the six months, no explanation. Yes. Great big fee paid. Um, but that was that was on our second trip, so now we've got a history of being together for 15 years yes. or more, uh, married, and uh, yeah, it should, it should be more beneficial that we get it. So uh, you know, it puts into perspective. One thing I would want to say is that it puts into perspective some of the comments that you, some of the, we probably both read sometimes on in, you know on YouTube vlogs and YouTube uh, uh, vlogs from Thailand, where other foreigners, other expats like ourselves, moan about issues of getting a visa in Thailand. But I think it puts for us living here. Yeah. I think it puts it into perspective. I mean, yeah, one thing the Thais having their rules and regulations and, and to be honest pretty small costs to get visas in Thailand mm -hmm. but when you compare it with the yeah well, what you're going through at the moment yeah. for your yeah. Thai wife to whom you've been married for quite a few years now um, getting a visa to go to the UK where you've got elderly parents living um, you know when you put put that into comparison um, it would be the same you know with Americans I think um, it's no easier for somebody wanting to take their Thai wife to the States. It's maybe even harder. I it's, it's difficult. It's not easy. So yeah. this is when I laughed when she when we first met. She says, "I'll get the visa," just knowing yeah. how difficult it was. Yes, and she did it and yeah. did it all herself. She didn't use a translator. She filled out all the forms in English herself. Yes. Did it all herself. I just couldn't yes. believe that she managed that. Well, I wish you luck with that. Are you expecting the next week or two to get? Positive news on that. On yes. The visa. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to Chiang Mai on Thursday. Okay. Um, to do her fingerprint scan and eye scan. Okay. You do that through the consulate in Chiang Mai rather. Than it's VFS. So it's, oh, I see. It's, it's the agency, isn't it? It's not even. Well, we either have to go to Bangkok or oh, okay. Chiang Mai. So Chiang okay. Mai is the closest. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wish you luck with that. You. Um, and you'll be down. How long are you going to the UK for? How long are you going to the UK for? When you a month, exactly a month. Okay. So we've booked a month return tickets, good old Thai Airways. Okay. Um, because we've booked connecting flights. Uh -huh. So Chiang Rai to Bangkok. Yes. Only an hour and a half transfer. Yes. Straight to straight to UK. So it saves yes. the hassle of. Yeah, you can put your luggage on here. Probably yeah. don't have to check it in again in Bangkok. Yeah. Check it right through to the to the UK. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wish you luck. And you, but but these trips back, like the one you, you're planning now. There's no encouragement for you to reconsider your life here in Thailand and go back to the UK, sell up the house here and the lake and so on that we'll be seeing later on in this little video no. and go back and live in the UK again. No. Um, I do live in one of the best places in England, yes. being yeah. from Cornwall, so yeah. it's, it's nice. So I'm luck lucky that I am from where I am, but even so, I've still got an apartment there, I've still got yes. property there. Mm. Um, but, and family there. Mm. I couldn't ride my motorbike every day. No, no. Because of the rain and the cold weather and everything yes, else. Yes. And uh, I just like my life here. No, re no regrets, really. Is no it? regrets. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think it's a good note to, to finish on, uh, Trevor. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll go and have a look at your, at your lovely house and uh, uh, little garden and. Uh, 
vegetables and so on you're growing outside the house and the, and the lake with the with the snakehead fish okay. and the views of the countryside and everything else and even some drone footage of your house coming up so uh, we'll ask the viewers to hang on and watch that and uh, yeah thanks a lot again no problem see you guys soon thanks <laughs>
and they basically said blame the accountant in oh, yeah. Royal Enfield okay. because it's just a bit annoying that yeah. I've just spent a year's wages, a year's income yeah. in Thailand on a brand new motorbike and I have to spend another 17,000 baht to change the suspension. Yeah. It's really annoying. You could probably get the Thai, what's it, YSS, the yeah, Thai yeah. brand? It's 17,000 baht. Well, yeah. It's a lot of money. It is, yeah, it is. It is. So it's just regrettable that I have to do that and I'm reluctant to do that and in fact I'm not going to do it. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm playing with the preload at the moment, adjusting mm -hmm. the preload. I've bought a gel pad to put into the seat. I'm going to attempt to do that myself. Mm. And obviously the roads here are a lot better than on the, on the way to Bangkok. So mm -hmm. it's not as bad here. And because it's local, I know where all the potholes are. So um, I can avoid them. Yes. They're not as bad. But on the way to Bangkok the other day, I just didn't know where they were and how deep they were. I had one that nearly swallowed the front wheel. Is that bad? Wow. And then you nearly... <laughs> gone into orbit right yeah so, not good but otherwise apart from the suspension you're quite happy with the bike aren't you well it got me to bangkok and back in two yeah. days 1600 kilometers and it didn't miss a beat it didn't miss a beat that's a nice way to run it in isn't it and and i had the confidence to do it because mm. because of the warranty that royal enfield give mm. it's got good coverage in in thailand so, mm. yeah i do like the bike but it's a bit heavier than my 350 in yeah fact, it's a lot heavier than my 350 yeah and even though they say the the seat height is lower, it mm. is if you measure it. Mm. Your legs are more splayed, so mm. I can't touch the ground as well as I could on my 350. So no, I'm missing my 350 a little bit. <laughs> Easier turning, more economical. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. But it's a handsome looking machine, though, isn't it? It is, and that's really, really why I bought it like this because they do it. And they do a touring version with a softer seat. Yes. But it just looks ugly. Yes. Where this is the bother style. And yes. Looks... And the, the green, it's, a, it's just like almost like a British racing green, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. So. Which is very much a classic color, side, isn't it? Quite black. Yes. So but it's a very, handsome. very handsome. Yeah. You get close to it. Good looking, good looking bike. Yeah. Yeah. beautiful countryside here. You've got the rice paddies right next to your property and uh, with the mountains in the background there in the distance. That's a beautiful view and I guess you're hoping that nobody's going to be able allowed to build on this land here. Oh they're talking about it already and we really? know it's going to happen one day in the future. But... Probably yeah because it's more valuable as building land than as rice land I expect. Yeah, but that's why we bought the maximum we could afford three rye. We got yeah. three rye here, so yeah. How much is that in acres? It's about one acre in English, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound much, but when things grow five times quicker in Thailand, yeah, um, it's enough to keep. You know, yeah. so I I get home from school at half past four. I'm straight on the lawnmower for an hour every day. That's my daily oh, wow. exercise: okay. cutting the grass and pulling the weeds. Mm. I still can't keep on top of it, to be honest. But yeah. It's what we wanted. So Pat's instructions was, bearing in mind we've been married for nearly 20 years. So mm. I met her when I was 35. I'm now 55. Yeah. So yeah, 20 years. So her instructions were, if ever you buy a piece of land, it's got to have a view of Doi Chang, which is just over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got to be near a canal, and it's got to be surrounded by rice fields. Well, you've got that, haven't you? And she certainly found it. So yeah. I was in England truck driving at the time. Yeah. And she made the call, I've been offered some land. It's really cheap. Beautiful. And bearing in mind we'd been together 15 years by then and she mm. hadn't asked for anything. It was like, okay, if you really think it's a good thing, let's do it. Yeah. I trusted her and she, she came up trumps. We got came a really good the goods, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where your brother-in-law comes every night, isn't it? In the early morning. Yeah. So because it was an ex rice field, we need to make it higher than the land around us to stop us from flooding. So we had this great idea of making the lake and using the earth that we dug out to make our land higher. It only did 10%. We had to pay for about 300 lorry loads of earth to come in and top up, but at least we're out of the floodplain and we've got a lake and it has absolutely stocked with fish. Mm. Um, nothing that we've bought either. It's all come from the canal. Oh. Every time we caught a fish with canal, we transplanted it in here. 
that was four years ago. They bred like crazy, and it's and these are the snakehead fish you said. All, all types of fish. Oh, okay. Tilapia, snakehead. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a barbecue in a minute, and the fish that you see on the grill came from this way. Uh, out of the heat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. We've got these net catchers. This is full of prawn in there as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So we put these in and get the prawns. There's one prawn right there look, that they didn't pick up. Can you see him? He's trying to, he's trying to get out. <laughs> a little mini one. Yeah. Well, actually, it was an ant picking him up. Yeah. So, yeah, some of the prawns. Yeah. And snails. And they eat the snails as well. Wow. A lake's a pretty good thing. Apart from I've got to get it topped up with water all the time. So I've got a solar pump from the canal feeding the lake all the time. But the water itself is probably well water, isn't it? So you don't, it's not from the grid, it's its out of the ground, the water you're putting into it. No, it's coming from Doi Chang. So Doi Chang is right there. I don't know if you can see it with your camera. Oh, yeah. It's, it comes from there. I don't know if you know when you go up to Doi Chang, you go through that uh, dip. Mm hmm. You reach like a ford where you cross the water on your motorbike. Oh, yeah. And it comes from there pretty much. So the canal flows right through. So I just got a solar pump in the canal and it sucks it out, tops up my pops up the lake every day and uh, we use that water also to, to water the veggies that are growing hmm oh yes what do you got over here then cabbages is it number one bestseller <laughs> so these are sold at the market no just just word of mouth Facebook people turn up at the gate oh yeah so they like them because this is a chemical free farm. Uh -huh. You don't use any chemicals. That's hmm. why you see loads of holes in the leaves. Oh, yeah. To me, that puts me off buying it. Those are the bugs. But it's the ties, it makes them want to buy it because anything that hasn't got bug holes on it, yeah. it's got chemicals on it. Yes, yes. So they prefer to buy stuff with bug holes. Yes. Because they know it's chemical free. And then because it's naturally fed water from the, from the canal, which is Doi Chang water. It's full of nutrients, and they say that these cabbages are very sweet. So they're sweet-tasting cabbage. Yeah, nice. Come back in a couple of months, and you'll be able to take one away and try for yourself. <laughs> very good.